Well, hello, my CNC brother or sister. I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft, and I'd like to welcome you to this video where we're going to talk a little bit about router bits and some problems you may have when it comes to cutting, especially if you're brand new to CNC routers or you got a machine coming. I want to give you a little heads up of some problems you may run into and how to resolve them and what's ca what's causing it. So. I get a lot of emails and I see in Facebook groups and I see in the comments of this channel of people with these various problems. One is the router bit seems to break way prematurely, sometimes right when it gets into the cut. Another is they're getting a lot of tear out in the cut. And tear out means that there's a lot of wood fiber hanging off the edge of the cut or the surface of the cut is not very clean. Another one is you may be getting a smoky smell off of it or even actually burning the wood and sometimes even getting a lot of smoke coming off of this. So there's several different reasons why this happens and I want you to understand what they are. And if you run into them, obviously you have to fix them. So the first one we're gonna talk about is the, the tear out that you may see on a the edge of the cut or you're getting a rough cut on the inside. The usual suspect for that is your bit just has met the end of its life. CNC router bits like anything else do not last forever. They're doing a lot of work over a long period of time and they do get dulls. So when they start to dull up then they're starting to rub the wood out and that doesn't it just doesn't work when it comes to wood. And so it starts to roll up the corners of the cut. The cuts themselves, they look very rough. Sometimes, if you're like me, you like to get about as much as you possibly can out of a router bit. But if you really want to get a good project and you start seeing the bit not performing the way it used to, run your finger on it. You will feel it. It's getting dull. It's just time to get rid of it. I've had people ask me, can they sharpen bits? There are some cases when you can sharpen them, but when it comes to like spiral bits, it doesn't become economical until you get to about a half inch diameter spiral bit. So if you're running with eighth inch or quarter inch, it's best to just replace that bit. I will say if it's carbide, hold on to it. Carbide's a very expensive metal. You can turn it in for recycling and you can get a pretty dollar out of it, like $5 a pound. So. Every year you can buy yourself a cup of coffee with, with the scrap of the carbide. So this one is just your router bit has gotten dull. One of the things if you keep trying to push it and it's dull, it's going to start generating heat in the bit itself. And that heat will break it down even faster. But it also transfers the heat up into the spindle, which will also put some wear and tear in your spindle. So just a dull router bit can actually cause a lot more problems and shorten the life of your machine a little bit. Get rid of the bit, it's not worth it. Number two is if you start to smell kind of a burning smell, but you're not really seeing smoke, you may be actually seeing some burn marks inside the cut, then that's an indication that your feeds and speeds are off. Now feed is actually how fast the router or the spindle is moving the bit through the wood. That's inches per minute, millimeters per second. The speed is actually the, the spindle speed, RPMs. Router bits have a certain optimum feed and speed range where you want the spindle to be turning within a range and the machine to be moving at a certain range or certain speed to get the best cut and preserve the life of the tool or bit for as long as you possibly can. For a new person, feeds and speeds can be kind of out there, right? It's just kind of beyond you. And you don't really need to have to worry about it. You just want to make sure that the information in your design software, when you have it generate the tool path, is set up properly so you'll have the proper feeds and speeds already. Design softwares come with some basic feed and speed information, but they're not really well populated databases. So you usually have to manually enter a lot of feeds and speeds into the database. If you need a feeds and speeds table, you can find them out on the internet. I have one available to you if you want it. There's a link down below in the description. Uh, you just click it, it'll download to your computer. It's a PDF. 
it's got all the common bits. Even better is if you have the Vectric software. I put together a tool library database that you can actually import into your Vectric software where all the feeds and speeds are already set for all the bits that are in the IDC Woodcraft store. And I carry virtually all the types of router bits that are out there with the exception of some specialty bits, which I am working on getting. So feeds and speeds are just important. You will have to kind of get a feel for that. It's a learning curve, but download that database or download that PDF and just work with those numbers for now. They're general numbers that will work with moderately hard woods and soft woods, MDF, things like that. If you're going with really hard woods, then you'll need to make adjustments to that. There's other videos I have in this channel that you can look at to learn about that. In fact, I have a PDF that has all the videos I've created in this channel that you can download that down below. That PDF is organized, it's got all the beginner stuff, it's got all the designs and the de design software, routers, router bits, and it's all separated and, and organized for the beginner. So you may want to download that PDF. Finally somebody has a PDF that has all the videos listed out in order. Okay, so we covered the dull bits and the feeds and speeds ratio. Now one of the other things I want to talk to you about before I get to the last one and the most important and common one I see is when the something called uh, radial velocity. So radial velocity is basically how fast something is spinning at the outer edge of its perimeter. When we're cutting with say a quarter inch diameter bit on the outer edge of that cutting edge of the bit itself We'll just say it's got a radial velocity of 50 miles per hour. Now, if you put in a one inch diameter bit or a one and a half inch diameter bit, that would be a surfacing bit, and you're running about the same spindle speed, the radial velocity is much, much higher. Meaning, because the distance from the center of the bit out to the edge is more than the spindle is still spinning at the same speed. That means the outer edge is traveling much faster. And when that happens, you'll usually see a burn mark on the outer edge of that cut of a larger bit. And the way to avoid that is simply by turning the spindle speed down a little further. With a surfacing bit, when that's happening, you'll see burn marks along the path around the outer edge of that cut or when it has to stop and transition in a new direction. It pauses for just a second and that just microsecond is long enough to burn the surface of the wood. So simply just turn the spindle speed down just a little bit more when it comes to that case. So before I get to this last problem, I just would like to say if this is giving you a little bit of insight, then please give me a thumbs up, maybe a comment down below, subscribe because I have a ton of videos that will teach you all about the CNC, the designing, the router, the router bits, and more stuff. Now we're gonna talk about the last and most common problem that I see unfortunately, and that is where the, no matter what you do, you're breaking your bit almost as soon as you get into the cut or the cut is just burning its way through and it doesn't matter how you adjust the feed speeds or the depth of cut, it's still burning the cut. When that happens, it is almost always a spindle that is turning backwards. So. I want to distinguish between a spindle and a router. On our long mill here, which is the machine that I recommend, and if you're looking for CNC routers, I did a really deep dive review on this machine to tell you what you should be looking for and what have you. So down below in the description is a link for the, uh, it's about an, hour and a half, about an hour and a half long video. You will get to know CNC routers by the time you're done with that video, if anything else. So if you want to get educated on a CNC router and know what to look for, Go watch that video. Okay, <laughs> we're talking about the spindle. This is a long mill and it has what they call a trim router. This is literally a router. I can take it off and I can trim stuff by hand if I wanted to. The other one or type of router is actually called a spindle. 
and that has its own control box for your machine it's it's got variable speeds that that are controlled inside the software so when you're seeing your bit break prematurely or it's just burning its way through your wood you're getting all kinds of strings hanging off the edge of the cut no matter how you try to set this thing up your spindle is running backwards even though in your design software it, it is going to generate out the right code the standard is to turn clockwise that is the proper direction for almost all CNC router bits out there unless you have a specialty left-handed bit so your spindle should be turning clockwise if you're getting burn or your bits are breaking all the time turn it on and watch and I'll almost guarantee your spindle is going backwards now one thing I have to point out here because I've seen it so so much whenever I get an email with this problem I can almost identify the brand and the machine and it's a next wave shark apparently they have been sending out machines with miswired controls and and I end up hearing about it but I've heard about it so much that I unfortunately I have to say this so if you have that kind of problem at, with that machine you need to contact next wave i've been in contact with them and told them i'm getting this many emails but even so no matter what machine you have if the, if you're just burning through it and it's just breaking all your small bits your spindle is running backwards and you need to get that fixed and you need to contact the machine maker to understand why that's happening so if you are a brand new CNC router owner or you are waiting on your machine, now you've got a little bit of a heads up of some of the things that you may run into and how to resolve them. Give me a thumbs up if this was helpful and a comment down below always helps my channel rank up there. And subscribe. I got tons to teach you. And with that, I'm going to bid you adieu. Have a great day, better tomorrow, and happy CNC.